What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For The Record. I'm your host, Rob Markman. We're still at home, but the music don't stop. So that means the culture doesn't stop and the conversation definitely doesn't stop. Okay, today's guest is one of the dopest MCs, one of my favorite MCs. And as an independent artist, she's built her business, established herself as a boss and an inspiration to others. She got a new project. There's been a lot of singles this year. There's rumors. There's talk of a new project coming out that she's working on. She's here to talk about it all today. Snow the product. Welcome to For the Record. What's up, man? How you doing? Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. Uh, you know what? I forgot to mention in, in, in your intro, too. Also a TV star. You know, we definitely watch Queen of the South, <laughs> man. I, I didn't know That's you were funny. on it, and, and then I, I, I peeped you. You know what I'm saying? And then that I was really popped dope. up. <laughs> that was hard. That was that was a pre green hair, but um, yeah, it, it that was a blessing for sure. And thank you again for having me. And sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm struggling. Nah, you're good. We're in quarantine, so it's all technical difficulties. Like all we have is technical difficulties that we work through. Right. So. But whatever, like you roll with it, right? Because I I feel like I've definitely been watching you and in tune to you, especially during COVID. You know, now that you know we're staying at home and being distanced and all that. And you've been pretty active on, on the music side, putting out videos, your vlogs is popping, like you got a lot of things going on. Um, what has changed for you, if anything, in the past few months? Just no touring. That's pretty much it. Other than that, I mean, I've always kind of been in quarantine, you know, as far as uh, I shooting our own videos, doing our own recording, like everything, you know, um, I... I did just move into the ranch that I wanted for like ever. So um, that changed, you know, it's it's been a, a huge blessing. But just in terms of like music industry, my my attorney was like, it almost seems like you knew this was coming. She's like, you have everything at your house that you need to have a, a career. You know what I mean? A music career. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of a blessing in disguise that that things didn't work out with me with everyone because um. I've just kind of got everything from merch to vlogs to podcasts to music videos to songs to recording to mixing to shooting. Yeah, just everything is there. It's really a blessing, you know, but a testament to you and, and the visionary because I, I think you built a lot of that stuff out of necessity. Like like you had a vision for yourself of who you wanted to be as an artist and, and how you wanted yourself presented. And I'd imagine there were, there were probably plenty of times when people didn't see that vision or align with that vision. So you just got out there and got it yourself. Um, what, where, where did you develop that, you know what I'm saying, that kind of entrepreneurial, that independent spirit that you have? Because you really embody it. I always, uh, I've always been kind of like that. Like if, if, if somebody, you know, I definitely was, grew up shy. So like I, I did always look for people to like, help me, you know, like voice things or do things because I was like shy or I thought I couldn't do it. Like, you know, and it's so weird that like, it's just never worked out. So it's like, I've had to step up. Like since I was little, you know, I've, I've, I've had to just kind of go for it. And, um, my mom, uh, she used to sell at the Swami and I used to watch her like sell things or like buy things. And then, you know, like, Buy, buy things wholesale, sell them, you know? So, like, I always kind of knew that um, you could just sell things, you know? So, to me, I was like, with whatever it is that I'm going to go do in, in my life, I'm going to have to be good at, like, sustaining and, like, selling or doing something. And so when I had to do this music thing and it wasn't working out and I was asking for help and no, it didn't work out with anybody or managers or lo or labels or whatever, I was just like, fuck it, you know? It's it's a song. I got to go sell this song. And then I got to go sell the CD and then I got to go sell this merch. And it just kind of, like, has happened. And I don't really know when or how it developed. It just did out of pure, like you said, necessity. That's dope. I mean, and you also... We're in the era with like we're purely digital now, right? But you were doing the hand to hand CDs, like you was out there in the street, really trying to to get your CD out there, right? Yeah, I think that's where the chip on my shoulder comes from. <laughs> the 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 very necessary chip on my shoulder comes from um, just I actually sold CDs on the street. I actually got told no. I actually got laughed at in my face you know what I'm saying like I've actually done the shows with two people in the crowd and sold CDs and sold tickets to get to open for somebody and then I would get there and then they'd be like you're not 21 so you can't come in when I just sold you know 100 tickets locally you know so it I've been through every single step of it and I think um that's why sometimes I understand 
that, you know, labels have it tough too. I'm not like a super major label hating type person. Um, even though I've been through what I've been through, it just, I, I know the business and I know that every single aspect of this needs, um, attention, I guess, <laughs> you know? And, 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 you know, look, the very real part of it is that some artists aren't built. There's a lot of work that goes into being independent. It's not just, hey, I want things my way. And if a label doesn't see it, I'm just going to do it myself. Because there's some people who are just not built to put in that work. There's some people who who need the different departments and the different services that a label provides because there's a lot of, you know, running through a wall. Um, you assigned to Atlantic. I mean, you have been independent for a while. When you signed to Atlantic 2018, you split with the label. Um, what what was the moment that you realized, hey, this 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 particular label, this major label is not gonna work for me? Like I I'm not, it's not a good fit. It was it was long before I actually left. It was like years. But I, I like I've always just historically given people or things too many chances. Like I'm a true cancer, so like I I I dread change. I dread dropping people or you know any of that type of stuff. Like it's the worst for me. So like I rather just give it one more chance and give it one more chance and have the comfort of like them telling me no this time it is gonna work this time it is gonna work and so I just stay I stuck around I changed management I did a bunch of different things to try to make it work and just at the end I was just like man I should have left four years ago when I wanted to you know what I mean or two years ago when I got this new manager and I told him my first move is I want to get out of Atlantic and they told me don't leave let's let's try to work it out so to me I just think um the biggest thing that I've learned in, in all the this is to trust my gut more um I finally just trust my gut and I'm just kind of like not letting anybody cloud my judgment when it comes to certain things because it's just the music industry and it's kind of everybody's new in this now like now every day there's new apps there's new things streaming you know playlisting first it's very important then it's like oh is it really that important fans tours everything is just kind of like has its nuances that I think not even major labels understand so at this point we're all we're all in the rat race just trying to figure it out. You know, you remind me a little bit and, and, and just, and I'm seeing this this trend now. Um, you know, even somebody like Russ, um, who who was signed to Columbia and he recently left and went independent was just like, you know, that's that's a guy too that if you follow his career is like, has very strong ideas about who he is and he kind of leads that. Like there's no marketing department that's going to lead that vision or, or he kind of knows what it is and he split from a major. And... You know, I wonder with you, I wonder of him, if we'll start seeing a trend of, of, of artists just really push towards this independent. Because I, I think you're right. I think in, in a lot of ways, the playing field is level and everybody is just kind of figuring it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So do you want to figure it out on your own and you're going to go through those pains? Or do you want to figure it out signed and giving away a large percentage at the same time? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. And, and, and like I've always said, like major label does work for some people. You know, I understand that being Mexican, like being being Latina in general, but being Mexican specifically and also being female gives me certain things and also queer certain things that a major label just isn't going to understand. And that's kind of what was going on with me, because with a lot of male rappers, I see them, you know, even like with Russ, like I definitely think that that's dope because he could have that confidence because he's a man and he like fucking knows, you know, whatever. But as a woman, this industry and a lot of industries are meant, they, they, they almost make you second guess yourself. There's men telling you what you should be doing. And you're like trying to explain why that that's not where the future is. Like, that's how it's been, but that's not where the future is. Same thing with being Mexican, you know, like make this song about, you know, this in the culture but it's like oh that's puerto rican culture that's not mexican culture so motherfuckers just don't get the the certain little details that like matter um and it just it's just a fucking clusterfuck so i've understood now for a lot of years i would be really depressed and i was like why why doesn't it work with me like you know like I, what am i doing wrong if i know that i got fans and i know i wrap my ass off i thought that's it i didn't realize oh shit there's like five different layers to me that just are new, you know, people just don't know. So it's crazy. And, and hitting those walls, right? Because it, it comes out in the music, I feel like, sometimes, or just kind of hearing you um, describe what you went through, like, 
just being empathetic, right? It'd be like, damn, that has to be really frustrating, right? And yeah. selfishly, I feel like my favorite songs from you are when you're just like fucking just going in on people, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah. like a today I decided, or or you know, even pressure. You know what I'm saying? Or even the, the new one really counts because it it's almost like you you deal with betrayal and and but your confidence and, and, and people who crossed you and then see you. I feel like that's a common theme in, in the music. Um, is, is that kind of like a way to get it off your chest? Like, do you feel relieved after making a song like Really Counts or Pressure or? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, And even sometimes, you know, because sometimes I, I've already been, I'm, I'm already over those feelings, you know, and it's like, like now I have to like shoot the video or something and it's like, I'm not there, but I have to like relive it and like really be like, okay, this is what it is. And then for everybody, you know, to be hitting me up about certain things that necessary, like maybe the, those feelings were like six months ago, but I'm I'm barely dropping the song now. So um, it's a lot. Like emotionally, this music shit is like it really is. You really are tapped into to to the the vibes and like the emotion that that you go through for certain stuff because obviously I have my fun songs, but then there's those ones where I'm just raw and going off, and those are the ones people gravitate towards more because everybody everybody's had those days. You know what I mean? Like so, I. I get it. I I get who I am now in the game. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like for a long time, I, I was a little bit like, but now it's like, oh, no, I know exactly who who I am and what the fuck I'm known for. I'm the girl that can rap really good. <laughs> you know? Nah, it's more than that. It's like, Yeah, yes. but 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 I'm a rapper's rapper. Like, mm-hmm. every rapper knows, knows who the fuck I am. If, even the most famous rappers. Like, I'll be walking into a room. They know who I am. They ain't going to shout me out. They're not going to talk about me ever publicly. They're not going to say anything. But they know who I am, you know? And, and they'll tell me, like, you could rap your ass off. That's it. Like, even rap, like even rapidy rappers will be like, yo, you could rap, rap your ass off. But I've taken, been taken off a lot of songs. Like, I'm just, like, a rapper's rapper. People check on me as a reference. But that's it. What What... What's some of the songs that you've been taking off? Can you talk about that? Or would you like to no, talk about that? No, because some of those people fell off just like they deserve to. So I'm not even going to fucking bring it up and now have my name attached to anybody. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, when they've been on their come up, they dead ass like, they think they're about to just be the next big, big thing. So they fucking kind of do some shady moves in the behind the scenes. And then when they fall off, they start reaching back out. And it's like... You had your moment, bro. Like you, you did what you needed to do with it, and that's it. Bye. And you lost it. I, you know, I, I'll, I'll challenge you a bit because I'm looking. Because you definitely like, you definitely have that right, and and the rapper's rapper, right, and you could definitely go off, and there's definitely venom. And first of all, I don't think it's that different. Like that theme that I was talking about that I that I enjoy from you, partly is maybe because I could relate to some of it. Like I feel some of those same things. But it's not that different when you kind of think about it from from the content and the feelings and the emotions that Drake gives us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, honestly, so I think it's like a common theme in, in rap. So not to kind of pigeonhole you in that either. But you also have like, you know, like um, Nowhere to Go is like a fun song that just bumps, you know what I'm saying? Or, or um, I Go or, you know what I'm saying? Like... It's certain shit that you also got shit that that could just get a party moving and and, and is like super dope in the show. So there, there's a tons of different sides. And then when you go off in Spanish, there's a lot of different sides to you. Yeah. Well, I I agree. I I think that I do have a lot of shit going on, which is why when I was at a major, I think it almost was kind of confusing. Was because. I do sing and I do rap in Spanish and I do rap in English and then I am aggressive and then I have all my party stuff and I'm a heavily touring artist, which requires me to most of my songs perform well on stage. You know what I'm saying? So like I do know that simplifying things too much sometimes is kind of difficult. I don't know. It's just a big old salsa and I'm happy with where everything is now because um, now I like... I just get to make whatever and, and it gravitates to who it gravitates to and I'm happy and that's it, you know? Like, like even like a song like Say Bitch, like, you know, aside from, like, you might have to clean it up from radio, 
like I could just hear that in the mix on 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 radio. Like that's that that's a big record to me. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of of how many spins it might get, like that's a big record that you can mix in with any record out there right now in any party, and it's gonna go. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I I sometimes listen to my shit and I'll be like, damn, bro. Like when I was at Atlantic and I gave them like a waste of time. Like I'm like. That was lit. Like at that time, like this is before Be Careful by Cardi. This is like, this is just, you know what I'm saying? And for them to have been like, mm, too aggressive towards men. Why are you always mad at men? It's like, bro, that's that's just like a good song, I think. But um, I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of dope shit. And, I, and that's why I think I'm super excited about having a new project. Because now it's just like, let me drop this. The fans and whoever ends up finding some of this music... They're gonna be like, oh shit, you know, like snow, snow's dope. It, it's funny that you, that you say that too aggressive towards men, as opposed to the five thousand records we get a month aggressive towards women, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You know, another record that you dropped during during this um, kind of whole stay at home, how I do it was cool too yeah. like I, I mean you did the whole 24 hour challenge with it um yeah so you just came up with that whole song video everything 24 hours yeah yeah uh we did that same thing with butter actually um and butter did really well say bitch was almost similar it wasn't 24 hours but it was like it was pretty fucking close the only thing that we struggled on was getting girls in the car because it was supposed to be this whole like go out and like pick up random girls and be like, yo, let's support each other. Bruh, that shit was difficult. There's so many girls that rather mad dog you or like roll their eyes and laugh at you than actually do it. But the bitches that did it, we had a blast. We met so many random girls. One of them was like a famous porn star. One of them was like a DJ. It was crazy. I like those um, challenges because, you know, as you know, I, I shoot the videos with my brother um, and then my girlfriend helps or my fiance now, but like she, she helps with everything. So it's just like us, we live together. We have some ideas. We're like, yo, let's make a song. Let's make a video. Let's just have fun. And those are usually the funnest shit. Like that's, that's when I'm sitting there. Like, I can't believe this is my life. Your business mostly is, is a family run business, right? Like, like it's, it's family. Involved. Who is it all that, that that's on your team? If you can run it down real quick again, I want to give kind of people, especially up and comers, a snapshot, a different option, a, a a, a new way of looking at things that maybe they don't need a major label and and if if you put the right people behind you that that really love you and in your circle you guys can get a lot done like like you have my brother uh Ido he's he's been with me since he was like super young he's actually like more into like rock and shit like so like when i used to rap i'd be like do i embarrass you that i'm a rapper you know but so he was more like I'll help you because you're my sister. Like, let's just do this. He's become since become a, a hip hop hip hop fan, and like he he fucks with the shit. But it is um it is cool to have a different person. But my brother's just a jack of all trades. Like any job he needed to get it done, he's done it because he loves me. You know, so he was a tour manager, even though he's fucking has social anxiety and doesn't like talking to people. He wasn't even 21, and he he was being my tour manager because that's who I trust to collect my money to do you know whatever. He's a big dude, so I'm like. You gonna be the tour manager. My cousin always like clothes, so he's my screen printer and he runs my clothing stuff um, and my merch. Um, he handles my merch on tour. Um, my cousin and my brother are the main ones that have always been with me. Um, from then, um, I've obviously got people, lost people, whatever. People come and go, but as long as I've had the the core foundation, um, which was us, all three of us do a lot of different jobs, you know. And that's what um, a lot of people think that your crew has to be like fucking thirty people. And it's like, it really doesn't. Like, if you have people that are really, that really want this shit, your crew could be very small and then you can grow from there. Uh, I have this guy, Mike Pacheco. I, I, I met him more recently, but he just joined the crew out of pure necessity. He's just like, yo, you need some people and I know this, this, and this. And I was like, all right, cool, let's go. He's like, I'll show you. Let me prove myself. And so he's been proving himself and honestly has, has proven to be another really important piece to this shit. Um, and then my girl... And then other than that, I, we got the crew like Pumba, Hondro, AJ. Those are my um like artists and yeah, Andro and AJ producers. Really, really talented rapper. Pumba, amazing yeah. beat tag. First of all, for anything, but his beats really <laughs> bump. Like, but as yeah, soon as you like, hear his tag, you know what you about to get. You know. Yeah. 
So, you know, so that's it. And yeah, and I've tried my hand at like, you know, bringing in artists or like trying to put artists on or whatever. And as you can see by some of my songs, it hasn't worked out. Um, but, you know, that that's the name of the game. You're going to you're going to take some L's. And as long as you can turn them into amazing content like I can, uh, it's all going to be good. <laughs> so what are the steps that you do now? How do you do distribute? Like, do you do like like, for example, um. I know Russ swears by TuneCore. You know what I'm saying? I, I myself, with my personal project, I use DistroKid. Um, in terms of distribution, in terms of, and again, I, I want this to be like informational too for, for people coming up. Um, you do all your stuff in-house, like you record in your own studio, you shoot videos in your warehouse. When it's time to upload a song, like how do you actually go about doing it? It's no doing that itself? Full disclosure, I've been trying everybody. Like my, that's why I, I'm about to have, besides moving my warehouse right now and moving my old house and, and like getting established in the ranch. Now I have to go around and grab my songs from different distributors that have fucked the shit up and now put together everything under one place. Because, um, yeah, so far right now, as of lately, I've been swearing by TuneCore too. Um, I've, I've used DistroKid. Um, I've used different distributors. I've gone through Create. I've done, I've gone through, um, what was it? What was the last one I was using? Fuck, I forgot. Oh, one RPM. Like I've tried different people, and that's cool. It's just that with TuneCore, there is a little bit more of just like I'm uploading it. I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'll handle the marketing. I just I got trust issues. I got trust trust issues with all this shit of like people promising me shit, and then when it's their time to put up their end of the bargain, motherfuckers don't got it. And you talk to artists a lot. Is that genu gen is that generally what people are saying right now? Um, no. You know why? Because I think most people will front and fake like everything is all good. A lot, a lot of artists, Fact. and this is just being honest, are, are comfortable with putting up the facade and making everything seem like it's okay, than actually talk about the stuff. Um, and 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 you know that's why I appreciate and and again not to compare. But Russ is somebody who's at, who I've interviewed. I've interviewed you a few times and in tune with your movements. I, I kind of see you two as the most kind of honest and transparent about where the game is and where you are and what works and yeah. what doesn't. You know what I'm saying? That's why I stopped doing panels. Was because whenever I would do a panel and fucking talk to artists, I was just saying the truth. And I'm up there with a bunch of people lying to them. And I'm supposed to like not tell these people's business because it's their business to fucking get paid to say some of the bullshit they're saying and i'm sitting here like bro that's a fucking lie that's that's a lie like you know you're not gonna tell me that that somebody got the double xl cover over me the year that i should have gotten it because that person just got signed to this label and they could have fucking got, like they 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 needed that for the sake of their rollout you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just certain shit that is like, bro, this game, a lot of people will lie to you, bold face lie. I think you could find more information on YouTube nowadays about how the fuck to run your your rap career than anywhere. Facts. I, I mean, and that's something, again, too, when we go back to everyday days it, it is a big part of um, what you do as well. And 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 not just kind of creating content for the sake of creating content, but, but it really shows your fans another side of you that when they're not playing the song, they're in tune to a conversation that you might be having with your mom or you might be having with your girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, and there's a level of transparency on that. But you were also kind of a pioneer for that stuff too. It wasn't like you just started vlogging because it was the cool thing to do. Like back in the woke TV days, you were putting the camera on yourself. What? How has it changed then versus now? Or, or has there been a change about kind of the vlogging and how it plays into your artistry? Okay, like, I've never taken myself that seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's why I think I can't be in a room with a bunch of rappers and, like, look at them. Because it's like, I can't believe y'all. Like, I want to laugh, you know? And it's not to be fucked up, but it's just kind of like, y'all, are y'all serious? Like, y'all don't get tired of that, this whole thing you're putting on, you know? Like, it's, it's, it's tiring, you know? It's like, I know you're a regular person. I know you enjoy a bowl of cereal watching TV and to fucking just get away from the bullshit all the time, you know? And it's like... To me, I've just always loved my personal side of my life so much. And so even though back in the woke TV days, I do feel like I held back a little bit. 
Um, for, you know, obviously back then my kid was really tiny and like, I didn't want him to nest. I didn't know what he was going to turn out to be. You know what I'm saying? And now that I know that he's a, just as loud, just as creative, just as crazy as me, I'm like, okay, I can see where you're going. We're here. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't know. He was just such a little sweet baby. I was like, I'm not, I'm not just going to put all this out there. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad that now I'm, I'm putting my personal life out a lot more because shit, my personal life changed a whole lot too. You know what I mean? Like now I got a whole girl and it's like, that's a whole different dynamic. And it's like, it's just crazy, bro. But I, I love having two sides of me, which is my rap career. And yeah, you know, you take me serious. I'm Snow the Product, whatever. But fuck that, dude. I'm, I love being Claudia. I love transitioning more towards just, just being a girl that can rap well. But overall, like I love... um showing the silly, stupid shit that we do. I mean, so that's the perfect segue into, into the next album. You know, you announced the title, um, Vale Madre, A Collection by Claudia, right? Like, I, I think I think that second part, A Collection by Claudia, is, is like really important as, as well and, and, and marks maybe a shift of, of where you're going or, or at least how you're presenting the music to us. Can you talk about that a bit? It's a big shift. Like I said, like, I've never taken myself that seriously, right? So, like, there's times when I don't plan shit or, like, I don't see things as deep as maybe they should be because I'm like, boo, you know? Like, I don't want to, uh, like, show that much emotion. But, like, nah, if I could be honest, like, I am in a, like, huge shift in my life. Like, like the weight off my shoulders of, like, not having anyone involved in my career and the just the wanting to be happy and the just wanting to be keep my fans happy, myself happy, my personal life and just being like, yo, I don't know how long I'm left on earth. I want to just be happy and enjoy what I've done and also just like not not bullshit myself or people just just not um not give up any of 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 real life shit and by 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 really finally being like, okay, like I want everybody to know Claudia and know me like for real um I feel like dropping a project that has some old songs and some brand new songs and just telling a story through it and showing you that I've been saying the same shit but that it has upgraded and it has grown but overall I've stayed the same person at the core I think it could be really cool and um I'm I, I just said the collection by Claudia thing finally kind of maybe thinking like maybe I should take myself a little bit seriously like, like maybe I do mean something to the culture maybe I am something that had never been really seen in our culture and a strong Mexican queer woman is needed to be out here you know and like grow and, and grow to that level that that I feel like we need some sort of representation so I don't know I'm it's like I said I'm just trying to figure it all out but I think I mean more than I thought I did, and that's lit. Now you you absolutely do. And listen, whether first of all you you could see it by the shows. Well, you know, I know we're not getting concerts for a while, but your show footage is crazy. Like you just see how many people go out there to have a good time. Um, the pat houses that you play is undeniable. So that's that's a right. Um, and then most people don't get that without a machine behind them. So so you're like, okay, well, where's the machine? There is none. Oh, this this is just a group of people, an artist and, and a group of people that she surrounds herself with who believe. And then fans who believe with them. Um, so you can't discount that. And then, you know, it kind of goes back to that thing that you said too about the, the rappers who will say it in the room, but maybe won't say it publicly. Um but you know, we were talking about that earlier. Some people front and put up a facade. So for whatever reason, even if within the specific season, that it's not cool to be like, yo, I fuck with Snow the Product shit. She's dope. You gotta know that, like, okay, so you just don't want to say it, but I know you fuck with my shit. I know it means something to you. So you absolutely mean something to the culture. And and you know, pers- like I'm I'm inspired when I see it. Like, you know, when I hear the records, um, you know, I know we did Genius a few times. We we did the thing at YouTube. We're doing this. Um, and, but really, and even just watching the business moves, I think it's super important. Um, because I and the fact that it's a family business, I I, I think people can learn. 
from that. You know what I mean? I think I get my flowers when I'm probably not really around anymore. But like, I, I, I'm going to come back to haunt a lot of people. I'm going to be like, man, fuck you. <laughs> I'll be like, man, you fucking, you liar. Don't say that shit. I'm just joking. But nah, I what, feel, what were you going to say? I, no, I feel that shit though. It's, it's like, look, <laughs> man, don't, when I'm, don't bring me flowers when I'm gone. Yeah. Like, I, I can't Straight enjoy up. them then. Like, 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 give it to me now. And I, I think it's a lesson that, that everybody can learn. Um, talk to me about the ranch. I'm hearing a lot about the Shit. ranch. It's lit. It's lit on this side. Uh, just, I wanted to finally, like I said, I have a growing son. And, like, I've always been very, a lot of people think that because you're a rapper, you're not. Or because I didn't put him out there um, in my earlier career that he wasn't around. That kid has toured with me. I'm talking about back when we could barely afford hotels. Like, I had to have a whole budget to actually have my own, you know, room so that I can have my son with me and, like, uh, like fix travel and do all those things. Like, so I, I've i always prioritized being a real parent in his life, you know? Like, he ain't ever had no nanny, no nothing. So it's like, I want to be able to have my warehouse, my house, everything under one place. There's four acres. Just fucking run this family business. Show my son what, you know, what this shit really is about and the work that comes with it um, and not miss anything. I just don't want to miss anything on business side or on personal side. And I just always, I grew up um, very Mexican. Always my family wanted to have their ranch in Mexico. And um, n now I'm like, well, I don't think, I don't see myself moving to Mexico. So I'm like, I, I might as well get it out here. Um, and God willing, you know, everything, everything's been real good. I'm, I'm very excited. And it's just, it's a lot of motivation to keep on working because it's like, yo, I can't believe that we're here now. And um, part of this new confidence is just like, yo, I I never, I never, I guess, saw everything accumulating until you, you buy a place like this and you're looking at it and you're like, holy shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I really had that, like, imposter syndrome. I really was like, 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 is it really, you know what I'm saying? Like, are we really here? Like, is this really, did I, is, do I deserve this shit? And it's like, it's crazy to think that, like, I do. <laughs> it's cool. Right. I just learned, I, I, I know what the feeling is of imposter syndrome. I just learned that as a term, literally like last week. Um, really? Yeah. Now nah, you deserve it. Like, you, Thank you. You work for it, man. This isn't fly by night. This is this is years and years and years. And, you know, I'm just interested in seeing, like, where is it going to go? In a lot of ways, I, I still get the feeling like we're still kind of at the beginning for you. And I, I don't know that you've made your biggest impact yet. Thank you. And thank you for saying that. Um, I hope so, man. I'm just going to work my ass off. That's it. I think a lot of people don't know. And, and like you said about about helping other independent artists or like, you know, people coming up, like, I think a lot of people don't realize that some of the best ones, um, because there's one thing I could tell you I'm a good rapper. You know, like I can I can I can confidently tell you I'm a good rapper. But as far as everything else, I've never been confident, you know, so like a lot of a lot of what's held me back, I can't just say that it was Atlantic or that it was it was things. It was a lot of me not having that confidence, like, or taking myself that seriously to the point where it was like, damn, like, maybe I'm not. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always, like, if somebody was like, are you sure about that song? I'd be like, oh, damn, like, maybe, maybe they're right. Like, maybe I'm not. And I think when you finally grow into that confidence and you finally know who the fuck you are, it changes the game. And I think that's kind of where I'm at right now is like, I finally feel very confident in a lot of different things that for 10 years I didn't. That's a big change. And that's a big weight off my shoulders. And that's just opens a lot of doors because I could do a lot of shit right now. You know, it's dope. That last question that I have for you, I mean, I mean, we could keep going on, but the last one that I kind of had on, on my list is, I mean, you being such a big um, touring act and having a lot of success out there. I mean, because you hit towns that, rappers just don't go through and, and, and bring and bring them out like and i'm like aspen and, and shit like that and i'm like i want to go like i i did not even i want to go to one of your shows like i want to go where it's popping at like you know what i'm saying um now now that we can't tour and it, it's going to be a while maybe before we hit shows how has that affected you and then how do you kind of navigate that for the future it's affected me greatly you know, um, 
end of 2019, I announced I wasn't going to tour. I, I, I wasn't planning on going out in 2020, like regardless, just because I've been touring for so long. And I was like, but it wasn't until I was told I can't <laughs> that that shit hit me. <laughs> that shit was like, wait, what? Um, Cause even before, even before they announced that I couldn't, I was already getting the, like the feeling like it's just a thing, you know, like it's just adrenaline. It's this like, it's not even so much about the money as much as just like that, that interaction, that, that, that stamp on, yo, I made, let's say six songs this year or 10 songs this year and motherfuckers are singing that shit and they feel that shit. And you know what I'm saying? Just that interaction of like that energy that you get from that, as much as it's draining and it fucking, you know, when you're on the road, it's still, it's a lot. You fucking miss that shit. And I miss that shit. Like it's, it's crazy. Um, if I was to be told like their concerts are going away forever, I'd be like, no, we're doing something illegal then because fuck that. Like, this is the greatest feeling. Like, that's dead ass why a lot of rock stars end up fucking doing drugs after they retire. Because it's just like, bro, like, well, I mean, they probably did them while they were doing it. But, um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to get that feeling nowhere else. That high of being on stage, that that shit is amazing. And it's like, I miss it a lot. And I just hope that um, that it comes back, man, because we got to figure something out. It's human beings have to have it's all about that connection. That's what it's about. You know, songs, you write a song, you want it to connect with people. And that's why you. I can have 10 million views. But if that shit didn't really make fans, like if that shit didn't really matter that much to people, it just happened to be that it got some AdSense or whatever the fuck. Or that doesn't mean as much as like, holy shit, I made a song that dead ass is like making people hit me up like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like that human shit is dope. Right. No, yeah. You need that. It's priceless. Um, And you did it all. And, and you still get the millions of views, which is which is dope. Um, no features, <laughs> no cosigns, and, and your shit still goes up every time. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing. Which God, God, I mean, thank God, man. Hopefully we keep on, we keep on keeping on. And, and I do want to have some collabs going on. I just... I don't know, man. What I got to do? I'm, I'm going to start singing. I'm going to just sing some hooks and just send them to people. Listen. Listen. <laughs> a lot of these motherfuckers need writers. So if you like, I'd be I'm, wondering. <laughs> write the whole song for them and then just be like, yo, one verse is mine. And, and there you go. You keep the rest. And that's our collab. I'd be wondering, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Just put the word out there. I'm trying to collab with some of these fucking rappers and they ain't fucking with it. Right. Nah, you go. You Whatever. Go Either, either they're going to have to see it now or they're going to see it later when it's too late, when, it, when <laughs> you're just unreachable. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know what? I've been loving the Spanish shit. The Spanish shit's been lit. Right. Nah. You, like. That, but that's just you. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, because like, you know what? As much as there's like reggaeton and, you know, whatever, dembo and like every type of ethnicity, like Mexican, Mexican rap that's like wild like mine that ain't really happening you know so it's like it's dope that i'm just kind of like talking mad shit and just being this like loud mexican bitch talking that shit and it's like it's new and i'm hype and 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 it, and it never was because i even feel like you know the mexican rap that i was in tune coming up to it was still very laid back and chill like it wasn't as aggressive it wasn't as fast paced it wasn't just going off like you going off it was real kind of laid back um, nah, you, you bring it, you definitely bring a new element to it. Like it is, it, it's, it's fun to watch. I'm telling you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's mad gay too. It's hilarious. I, I always wonder how mad my family is, but I don't ask. Why? <laughs> Wait, why would they be mad? <laughs> cause, cause my, cause Mexican people, especially Catholic people are mad homophobic. Yeah. But so when I just, when I just did all this shit, I didn't even ask. I didn't come out to nobody. I didn't nothing. I just welcome. <laughs> It's it's life, and uh, it's been great. It's been amazing for nah, me. Listen, man, they they either gonna accept it, or they gonna talk under their breath and say so. But they not they not gonna bring it to you. You know what I mean? And 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 you gotta live your life. That's it. When's the album coming? Can can we hold you to a specific date? Or I know you're still recording new music for it, right? 
I am. Um, I was gonna, uh, it was actually coming sooner than later, but I was 1200 orders, merch orders behind. And I fucking, I went to the warehouse and I personally was fucking packaging shit, signing shit, sending shit. Cause I was like, bro, like these fans got to get their shit. Cause when the album comes, I don't want the last thing they're remembering is their, their orders late. So hell nah, we about to get these people right. I'm calling people. I'm personally texting fans like, yo, we don't got this shit. I'm gonna swap you to this and I'm gonna upgrade you to this. And I, and I got you and they're fucking happy. So first I got to make my fans happy. I'm about to hit the studio every night this week. And I think what, I think, I think by, I'm not going to say when exactly, because I don't know if I could do it, but I think October, November, it's definitely happening. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put a, we'll put a placeholder there, but if, if you don't make it, we, we rather have our merch first. So we don't, so we don't look at you crazy after the money we spent. Nah, but that just shows how, how hands on you are, which is dope too. Like I, I see the videos with you in there. I see the videos with your son in there, packing merch stuff and, and. You out here working. It's dope. Yeah. I got me in New York, bitch. She was she had so much attitude when she first met me. And I was like, I don't know if you know, sweetie, but I have to fold 200 shirts right now. So that that attitude, at least have it while you helping your bitch out. And nah, she's totally changed. Like, Juju, I don't know. You've, you've, you've seen the everyday days. You've seen her change. You've seen her grow. She's, she's in this bitch now. So it's lit. Um, I'm happy. Family business, great. Um, album's coming. Merch is doing good. Fans are happy. That's all. What else can I fucking ask for? I love it. That's what's up. Well, good luck to you. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely wanted to have this conversation because um, I've been seeing what you've been doing You know, during COVID and stuff like that, and you've definitely been working, and I, I've personally been inspired by it, so it was a good time. Thank you, and thank you for always supporting me. Real shit. Like, you, you dead ass have always... Um, have always supported me and and shown me a lot of love and I appreciate that because that comes few and far between in this shit. Nah, man, I'm I'm just a I, I'm a rap fan at the end of the day and and, and you're dope. <laughs> so it was like that's what drew me in and then I be hooked to the soap opera, man. I know I know about you and your girl. I know about the night y'all met <laughs> at Henrietta Hudson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, is that place still open? I, t- I heard it was. Ask me. I haven't been outside my house since March. Who knows? Right, <laughs> I go to the grocery man. store and that's it. And the studio every once in a while. Like I, maybe, but you know, a lot of businesses <laughs> is hurting. But um, yeah, man. So you're, you're you're always welcome. Like you know that you always got my Thank line. You. Um, and, and I'm always gonna support, man. I'm a fan. Uh, I appreciate you, you taking out the time. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. And I appreciate y'all for watching. For the record, every week, you know, we always come with a new guest, with new conversations. Definitely hit the comments. Let me know your favorite Snow the Product song, your favorite lines. You know, I'm going to be in there in the comments with you just talking that talk, man. This is For the Record. Peace.